Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Inside the Nest for Men's and Women's Tennis. We are joined today by third-year head coach Doug Ellie. Coach, thanks for taking some time out of your day to sit down and talk a little tennis with us. Look forward to it. Absolutely. So let's jump all the way back to the spring. You are one of the um, sports that was pretty heavily impacted by the shutdown of just losing your, your season. Um, but I feel like tennis was in a little bit of a unique situation, both good and bad. Um, you know, on the men's side, that, that team had already doubled their win total from the previous year. You had players like Bjorn Myers, who was far and away having the best season of his career. Um, so obviously hated to lose that season. And then on the women's side, you were hit pretty hard by the injury bug. Um, you know, had very few players at times that were able to compete. And so while we didn't want to see the end of that season, in a way, I feel like it maybe provided you an opportunity to get your kids healthy. Um, tell us, you know, what was that spring like, you know, talking to your kids as, as that season ended and you know, did you find any benefits out of it? Um, yeah, it was, uh, it was very difficult for three out of the four seniors for sure. Um, Meredith, who was injured and she had um, back surgery, she, she might have been able to play one of the last matches of the spring season. But, uh, you know, Jessica Ferris came off of um, not even playing really in the top six last year, and she was playing three and four, and she was, she was having a great season um, and, and playing all the matches, um, developing quite a bit. Um, Hayden Folk and, like you said, Bjorn Myers, you know, from Australia, you know, he was having probably his best season um, ever. He was 11 and four when we stopped in singles. Um, and Hayden Folk, you know, he, he had a huge impact on getting me here. Um, and, uh, you know, I've known him since he was eight years old at the country club in Springfield. Um, he, matter of fact, he, he pretty much had a light schedule his, his last semester just so he could concentrate on tennis. So the, that hit them really hard and they had a they had a great chance the men had a really good chance of of qualifying for the conference tournament and that hadn't happened in a while mm -hmm. so for the men it was difficult the women like you said there was a lot of injuries there was a little bit of a blessing you know in some ways it, it gave uh, Jillian who was playing uh, in the fall she was playing number one she wasn't even playing um, so um, yeah it, it was tough for the for the seniors, for sure. Absolutely, I think that's kind of the the, the thing we've been hearing. It's just not unexpected, you know. I think most of us that were college athletes would would say that that would have been extremely difficult, and uh, especially on our coaches having to share that news. I'm sure. Um, you know, how did you personally spend some of that time? Obviously, I know. I think um, you're not having your games. I think your dad came up and, and spent some time with you, maybe. But how did you spend some of that time this spring that you had off that you hadn't planned to? Well, thank God he got caught here because you know I'm. I live by myself, and uh, as you know, this is uh, it's an uh, it's a very unusual time. Humans are 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 social beings. We we don't like being by ourselves, and uh, so my dad got and his wife got caught here. They they live in Belgium, and they weren't allowed to go back, and so he spent about six weeks with me, which was really nice. Um, and as you know, I come from the private sector. And you know my office skills. <laughs> They're not great. So it's, it has given me an opportunity to spend some time on, uh, you know, getting better at, at uh, you know, office strategies, software. Um, I am not used – I've gained weight because I'm not used to sitting like this. You know, I was on the court, you know, pretty much 40 to 50 hours a week before I took this job. Um, so um, – it's been an interesting transition, you know, you know, I heard, you know, coaching is about 15 to 20% of the job and the rest is recruiting fundraising, you know? Um, and, uh, so I, I got better at that. I, I, I got on to American public square, which I really love. It's, it's just a community thing to, uh, you know, discuss the issues for our future in a positive way. So I, I really enjoyed that. I've, I've jumped on a couple of um, chat groups, um, and so that's kind of how I spent my time. Absolutely. Um, so you are one of the few sports this fall that gets to compete. So congratulations, first of all. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah. Um, some outside competition, and, and you have your first competition this last weekend, first competition for, for Jewel since March 10th, which is you know over six months. 
is there any kind of pressure on you? Do you feel like, man, we, we got to perform well. It's the first one of the years, first one in a long time, um, or just how excited were you and, and your student athletes for the weekend? Well, you know, we're just excited to be on the court, you know, and being able to do um, the things that we, we train on. And uh, we haven't had to adjust too many things because tennis is a low risk um, sport for, for COVID and, uh, we keep our distances. Um, you know, obviously we have to learn to, to wear our masks when we're not playing the, playing the sport. Um, so, but not that many adjustments in that fact. And, uh, yeah, we're, we're just excited that we're able to play. Um, the fall is our, um, really our season. It's not our, championship season it's it's really a, a time for them to develop as players and learn some new skills and apply them in competition so um you know winning isn't i mean we love to win i mean we want to win everything but our focus is the development in the fall and the, and the spring is our focus on winning absolutely um you talk a little bit about development. You've got some new kids on your, your team, new faces. Um, talk a little bit about your recruiting class, and you brought in, correct me if I'm wrong, three three or four on each side. Uh, so talk a little bit about your recruiting class and, and who they are. What do they bring to your team? Well, we have with, with the women, uh, Julia Santos from Brazil. Um, unfortunately, she was not able to get her visa, so she's not coming in until January. She was supposed to be here. This fall, she's actually doing her classes online from Brazil at present. Um, and she's just, um, she'll be that next generation of Jewel players, fantastic player. Um, and then we have Tatum Carson, who's a, a fantastic athlete. She's a switchover from softball. I mean, this gal's got some skills. Um, Hand-eye coordination is fantastic. Um, she's a beast on the court as far as just her mobility, um, and she's a quick learner. She did play tennis in high school, so it's not like um, she's just starting from you know the get go. But uh, and did then we have on the street. Yeah, yeah. So she, you know, and she was going to help us out this last spring, you know, because we needed bodies, and uh, and that's how we found her, um, uh, Michaela uh, Esau. Um, she's from Hutchinson, Kansas, and she played number one for her high school, but, uh, you know, she's doing the Oxbridge program here. So she, she felt like she couldn't do both. That's why she didn't get involved with tennis initially. Um, but, uh, she's helping us out this season, this year. And then she goes to London, uh, she goes out over to Ox, Oxford and, uh, for her senior year and, uh, very good tennis player, um, great hand-eye coordination, um, strong. So she's going to add a big, um, she'll have a big impact on the team as well for the women. Um, for the men, we have uh, three freshmen, uh, Corey Conley from Warrensburg, Missouri. Um, his mom is the tennis coach there. His dad's the football coach. He played both sports, so he's a multi-sport. And we have a couple of players like that. Very strong, physical, um, and he's going to do great things for us. Um, Nicholas Shields is from Trenton, Missouri. Same thing, played foot. Guy's incredibly fast, very deceptive. He doesn't look like he's going to run for a ball, and then he just takes off. Um, and so he's going to make a big impact as well. And then Evan Acuff um, is from the Kansas City area. Um, great, all three of them are excellent athletes. Um, they still have a huge upside. Um, so really look to see um, them improve the next two years and have a huge impact on our conference their junior and senior year for sure. Absolutely. Um, you, you have some local guys, and I know that when you came in, that was something you really wanted to focus on was kind of the Kansas City, the Missouri, Kansas area. Um, you know, we love our international student athletes, but we also wanted to make sure we had, had some kind of homegrown kids here on our campus. Um, you know, how do you go about kind of almost repairing some of those relationships with, with the local players? Well, you have to get involved with the community. And uh, Clayview Country Club is, is a great place. That's where we play most of our matches right now. Um, we do play some on campus. but uh, um, And they're a great funnel for that. Uh, matter of fact, um, 
you know, that's how I got Nick Shields um, was through Doug Cout, who's the director there. And, um, and that's important. I mean, we've talked, uh, we got Evan Aka from K-Cut. Um, so, um, you know, I, I communicate with the academies in this area. Um, that is part of my background too. You know, I, I did that for 30 years. So um, I have those connections. And, uh, you know, when I played at D1 at, at Missouri State, um, when they recruited me, um, after that first year, I was the only American on the team. And so I, I think that, you know, American tennis has been hit because we're recruiting so much from around the world. And uh, I love that. You know, I love the diversity. I, I love the culture from other countries. I've lived overseas for, you know, almost 12 years. Um, but the, the American tennis loses out on that. Um, when you only have a lot of these teams don't even have an American in their top six. And those are the players that are getting to play the most matches. They're the ones that are developing and then they're going back to their countries. So we, we wanted to emphasize our, our, our regional, our area here and develop the players here. Absolutely. And I think that, that no matter the sport, you know, having some of those homegrown and, and local athletes is, is important. Um, it helps, you know, kind of keep those connections with those high school coaches and, and players down the road. And like you said, we love the diversity on campus. We love our internationals. Um, you know, Julia Yamate is still a member of the women's team. Absolutely great young lady. Um, you know, but it is very nice to, to have some of those local connections because that kind of builds your fan base a little bit as well when you have some parents and, and high school coaches and stuff that like to come over and, and watch those local athletes. Yeah, and we got, I mean, we, we're still, I mean, I'm still recruiting overseas. I, I just talked with an Austrian this morning, um, and uh, he would be a big acquisition for us for 2021. Um, uh, we're looking at another kid from Cyprus. Um, so it's not like we're not looking overseas, but our emphasis is here locally. Absolutely. Well, it's, it's great to hear. Um, great to hear about some new players and um getting on on the court this this month um so thank you for taking some time out of year what i'm sure is getting to be a very busy time of year for you and we'll see you again in just a few weeks and good luck with your upcoming matches all right thank you very much go cardinals